Let us go. Let us go, he says. Let us go. The sports wrap, Georgian Ringer. Well, it's almost October. It is. And uh, here we are in the last week of September on a Wednesday afternoon at a very quiet Rainier Muni. Well, that's all right. It, it's, uh, it could be quiet from time to time. But uh, just talking, and Jen said, you know, the summertime and the fall has a demarcation point, and this is kind of it. So everybody's <laughs> heading out to the woods to, you know, uh, shoot defensive bir defenseless birds and, and have a good time out there. So uh, a little bit shallower. After think after deer hunting, they'll all come back. They'll all come back. They need they need a break from the rain. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jen says no. no. They no. need to be here. Get yes. your yeah, get your buttons back. Anyway, well, I suppose we, yeah, we it's, it is football season, so it I is. suppose we better talk football, right? Let's do that. So I suppose we should start with the golfers this week. Hey, we I don't ladies. know where why you would pick that up, but I, I you know, uh, you know, there's just a couple of, of notes I want to share with you. A couple of notes just from that Gopher football game. Gopher just a couple. Yeah. He's got, I'm sure he's got a plethora of notes. Well, I have a couple of things, yes. But if we take a look, uh, the fact of it is, is that Minnesota, Minnesota beat him up. My concerns about about the, go, the Gophers about Minnesota uh, Minnesota against uh, Michigan State were uh, were uh, unfounded. They, they, they took care of business and, and how. Here's Tanner Morgan, and this is different from last year. 23 out of 26. Mm. Okay. For 268 yards, two touchdowns, scoring drives of 75 and 77 yards, completed a, a 9 of 10 passes in the first quarter for 111. <coughs> the first quarter, they just beat the heck out of them. They had 169 yards to 1. And then, uh, on top of that... Uh, when you take a look at this, he completed it to 10 different receivers. 23 passes to 10 different people. So tell me what's the difference between last year and this year? I think there's a new offensive coordinator. Ah, there's a new old <laughs> offensive there, coordinator. There's a new there, old yeah. offensive coordinator. Yeah, I this think. is what they shuffled around uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and this is what we missed last year. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, Kirk, uh, Kirk Shiraka is uh, definitely uh, got, got something with him and Tanner Morgan. Uh, Good mix, uh, seem to understand what each other can and wants to do. And uh, the 34 7 win for the Gophers was uh, an absolute, and I don't know if it was that close necessarily. Uh, you know, they, they scored with 17 seconds left, yeah. you know, and, and prior to that, and who knows who was on the field at the end of yeah. the game. And, and uh, But the fact of it is, is that they totally dominated the first half, was uh, my mouth was wide open. I couldn't believe that what I saw was happening, but they they had a nice balanced running attack, and 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 uh, um, Mo went down, and Trey Potts picked up right where he left off and started running real well. Also, well, and I think I, I yeah. think the big thing was at one point in the second half. I think I, I got home for part of the second half. I think at one point they had like 19 or 20 10 plus yard plays to four. They had 20 plays of 10 over, yeah. over 10 yards at one point. I was in like early in the fourth quarter, and I'm like, "Holy moly!" Yeah, they like, just ran those through. are chunks, as George likes They're to chunk, say. Chunk running, and they and they were, oh, they were really good. Uh, Ibrahim is, uh, I don't know what what he's going to end up with, but uh, you know he's going to start getting recognition here pretty quick. ESPN said that he is fourth right now in the Heisman balloting by their count. Okay. No, hey, he's he's really fun to watch. Uh, the line, you know, last year how huh, the line could seal real well, and they they could squeeze inside and they could seal the pocket pretty well. This line explodes. It just explodes. It's much quicker, and they're uh, they're coming together real well at offense. Yeah, they get Purdue this week uh, at home for homecoming. homecoming Let's yes. hope they don't have their. Uh heads up their uh, wazoos and get all the sunshine blowing up there and how good they are and how well they played, just like we just got done saying. Yeah. Um, P.J. Fleck, I don't think we'll let this team get there, but this is what happened last year. You might recall they played well against Ohio State, and, and they had a nice win in the game, too, and then they played Bowling Green. I'm going to keep bringing up Bowling Green probably until uh, the day that I was die. A, that was a nightmare. You should. You'll always remember uh, it. So, to me, that's that's where, where, where the concerns lie. That's what needs to be avoided 
And uh, yeah, they're four and zero. Oh, uh, well done. Well, they're ranked well third in the Big Ten, and they have they have. I mean, this is the Big Ten. Anybody can beat anybody, and and uh, the fact of it is is that I think Purdue is not as disciplined team as it could be. They lost at least the Syracuse game because of emotional mistakes. And well, it, says, it, it was interesting. I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to yeah. cut in on you because I watched the press conference with the Purdue coach just by pure happenstance. I was flipping through the channels a few nights later, and he was talking about the fact that the official did not explain to them why they had gotten a 15-yard penalty. He said, we had no clue. So when I asked them to explain why we were kicking from where they were kicking, why we were kicking from, he basically said because you got a penalty and he has to explain or something along that line. Anyway, the coach got another 15. And uh, he said, uh, that's my fault. Um, I don't feel like it was necessarily all my fault because I feel like we had been almost, the way he made it sound, purposely not told what was going on, what was happening. So he said, but it's not going to happen again. We, we So it'll be interesting to see. Nah, this big tight end, he'd been, he'd been mouthy pretty much the whole game. He caught a pass in the end zone, and he was bad mouthing another player, and you know, chucking and jiving and doing all the rest of this stuff, and, uh, and, and they flagged him for that. And then, well, what I'm saying is, referees yeah. got to go, got to go tell the, what, what's going on. Yeah. I mean, that that's part that's, of the deal. Ref, coaches have the right to know what's going on. So if the coach is telling the truth, I think the referees were partially at fault, just like, you know, they were partially at fault for costing the, the Vikings a chance at a field goal in the uh, first half, but we'll talk more about that after we get done with college yeah. football. Sure. Yeah. What yeah. else did you get out of Saturday, football, college football-wise, because I'm sure you immersed yourself. Well, I, I after the Minnesota game, i got to tell you, we had a little celebration, and uh, and we started watching some of the other games, but uh, but uh, hey, the Minnesota game really kind of tied it up, and, and um, when you see some of the other games, hey, they were they were secondary. Which which yeah. teams did you see? Uh, I, I, I I didn't really see much of football on Saturday yeah. at all because I had two volleyball games and a hockey game on the air on Saturday, so I didn't get to watch a whole lot of uh, really anything on Saturday. But uh, of course, the Ohio State score stuck out with the way they whooped up on the Badgers. Not that to say that that means a whole lot because Ohio State's very good. I don't know what that tells us necessarily about Wisconsin, other than they're obviously not what they have been in the past. Um, so of course, right that now makes Minnesota is ranked third in the in, in the Big Ten, behind Ohio State and Michigan. And you have to wonder if that's real. That's a long ways from the beginning of the of, of the season, a mere month ago. Yeah, I. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think. Polars knew how good the, the Gophers could be. Well, I don't know if we knew how good the Gophers could be. I think we knew that they could had a chance to be decent, but uh, 34 to 7 at Michigan State on the road kind of I think perked everybody's ears up a little bit. Uh, to say that fact, which I was not aware of, uh, the fact that Michigan and Ohio State play in the same division uh, leads you into that idea that okay, that means that. Uh, what Minnesota is the best team in the West, which we're going to find out whether that's going to be the case or not. I do know this, at least it was reported. There were officials from the Rose Bowl at this game. I don't know why, but they want to sell me a what, ticket. What, 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 what I don't understand is they can watch that game on TV. What do they got to be in? Oh, because they like football. Yeah. They like to go to these games. Uh, it all makes sense to me. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I, when I was at the, at the championship game a couple of years ago, a lady came up to me and she says, do you represent uh, uh, the Alamo Bowl? And I says, uh, no. She says, how about how about the Nashville Bowl? I don't know, music, City Bowl? Music, music City Bowl. No, but I had my Bronco Nagurski shirt on, and they came up all the time, and people talked because there was nobody else in the whole place that had one. Sure. And you know, so they asked all kinds of things. So yeah, but. You know, Rose Bowl is going to set that up, and Minnesota is looking like a like a high powered team right now. So they're well, yeah, you got to guess that either uh, Ohio State or Michigan is going to the college football playoff. You yeah. would think one of those two teams, and you would think that 
the other could be selected for the Rose Bowl, but why not the Gophers? Well, why not the Gophers? And I tell you right now, what that does is really gets down. If this was kind of a showdown to show, here, we are here, Penn State's the one that uh, 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 that they got to stand out in. I don't know if they have to win that game, but they have to stand out in that game. Yeah, they, they cannot get blown out at Penn State in, in three weeks. State, That's on no. October 22nd. Yeah. Uh, after this week, after playing Purdue, they get a week off, and then I think it's Rutgers or Maryland. I can't remember which one because in my mind they're the same because they came in at the same time. Well, and, they're and, East. and actually, I, I watched uh, I watched Maryland, and they got a really nice team. Showed Another themselves well against Michigan, Michigan on the road at Michigan. On, right? on the road at Michigan, and they they've got a very fine team. And Rutgers, they're not that bad either. So you know, we'll see what the what comes of that. But uh, I was real impressed with Maryland. Uh, they uh, they got a good show. They got a good show there. Your Bulldogs lost. Uh, a, at least according one. to the radio guy, they got screwed. That for that's saying it nicely, I think. Uh, Jeff Pappas went on on the Twitter and world and said this. I think I'm pretty close to the quote. The officials should be ashamed <laughs> that they stole that win from the uh, from the UMB Bulldogs. So uh, that that uh, is a loss that hurts because. Uh, I would say that probably seals no postseason play for them after losing to Mankato and now losing yeah, uh, at Sioux Falls. It's going to make it pretty that, tough. The rest of the seasons don't give me either. No, and no. so, you know, they have some. And it's amazing because they lost three games by very small <laughs> margins, you know, touchdown or less, and, and have not gotten blown out of anything in, a, in a, what would be considered a Bulldog rebuilding year. And so, you know, I. Uh, hey, I think they got a good team. I've only seen them. I've seen them once and once in the fog. So uh, you know, it's hard to tell. But hey, Vinny Repish is back. Hey, Vinny, uh, this is all we need. Uh, Johnny's lost uh, at Bethel. Bethel. Uh, interesting game down there. Uh, uh, St. John's had won a couple of games over some uh, two teams from Wisconsin, and then uh, they they couldn't quite get her done against Bethel. So. Uh, obviously, those two teams probably play in the uh, in the Mayak Championship game with the winner making the NCAA tournament anyway. So I think St. John's is okay, but I thought it was uh, noteworthy of a, a college football. I, I, I made mention of the fact that somebody that would kind of appreciate St. John's and they almost gag. So it's uh, it's it was a tough thing to lose yeah. to Bethel. It's probably been a long time since they have, but good for Bethel. Good I'm for Bethel. Yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that. Good, uh, co- good to have competition. Mm-hmm. Makes you better. It does. So, well, let's talk about the Vikings. Let's talk about the Vikings. They they dodged did we, the bullet. Did, did we learn it? Did we learn anything about them this um, week? Yeah, I I think we did. Um, I think that they can win against a good football team because I think the Lions were a good football team, and they dominated for a while. What does concern me is they had no sacks. They had no real rushes until late in the game. So that defensive line, and I knew the offensive line for Detroit has improved, and it has. But they shut down uh, our de- de- defensive line and our rushing ends and our and linebackers and all the rest that were coming. And, and, and they asked Hendricks afterwards, well, a couple days later, does this new defense stop you from becoming aggressive? And he says, yeah, maybe it does. I can see where you're – because I think the offense is going through the same thing. There's a lot of thinking going on and ra- instead of just reacting and just playing football. It's not it, – the, the, new, the new scheme, both offensively and defensively, hasn't become uh, second nature yet. And so that uh, that's a big concern. Uh, the Vikings did get away without having Harrison uh, Smith on the field. Yep. Uh, and one of their other quarterbacks, uh, Hand, I believe, was his name. And those are two big people. Those 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 are two big people. Yeah. So to think that the Vikings got away without those two guys on the field, their defense, I think. Makes you happy, uh, of course. Uh, I'm going to throw Jim Rich because I, I think it was him, or maybe it was Mike, uh, uh, the the former snapper, one of the two guys on the uh, radio show on the Jim Bob Jamboree a couple Saturdays ago was bad mouthing Kirk Cousins again, like lots of people like to, because it's easy to do. Um, look at it. over yeah, here. Yeah, we got yeah, a fan yeah. over here giving his thumbs down. Hey, Kirk Cousins just made a comeback in the game, which is the complaint that oh, he can never win in the final minute. He can never win in the final minute. Guess what Kirk Cousins did, folks? He went out and won in the final minute. Now, I think that means you guys got to shut up and put a, put a sock in it. 
Okay. No, I, but I mean, you're right. They don't. They don't. They generally don't. They they don't they don't pull pull their hazelnuts out of the fire. So. You know, at this time okay. they did. Okay, but was, Josh, but Josh Allen couldn't do it last week against no. Miami because he was dehydrated and ran ninety plays. And ran. come on, are we going to bat? Are we bad mouthing Josh Allen now too? Is he get the thumbs no, down but signal? You know, Josh Allen. He, lost. he also threw sixty three passes, which and I, they lost. It's madness. Then come on, <laughs> for four hundred and he lost. And he lost. <laughs> come on, people. <laughs> and he oh. lost. Yeah. yeah anyway, it's, it's, I love going after the Kirk Cousin bashers because no, I'm not going to do that because them. you know when his when his passes are sharp and on on, on the line, <laughs> about the double thumbs down instead of just one. Yeah, he, he, I'll tell you what. I, I'm going to say this in defense of Mike O'Reilly. I, I, on, 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 on in the third quarter, I was ready to give him the heave hole because he 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 threw one of those balls and I'm like, where in the God's heaven? And that's cleaned up for family viewing. Where is that ball going? I, I I got no clue. And I'm like, and then he came out and did what he did in the fourth quarter, and you kind of go, well, by God. Hey, hey, when he has to thread the needle, he knows how to do it. Kevin O'Connell, head coach, said this after the game. We had to come up with plays that weren't on our play sheet to win that football game. That tells me that the coaching staff isn't quite ready to go. And because they don't feel like they got the full playbook in yet, because the offense is thinking, like I said a, a, a few minutes ago. So that tells you that... Uh, the coaching staff has to either get this team up to speed or we're going to see some really good stuff later in the year. I'm not sure. Well, I, I'm not sure either, but you know, the first three quarters or the first three, three and a half quarters were, um, you know, weren't much of a ball game from the Vikings' point of view. But, you know, it's like, it's like I follow Frank Ragnall, the, the offensive center, number 77 down there because he's from, he's from Chan Hassan, and I know I'm good friends with his ninth grade football coach, and he tells me that Frank Ragano is as nice a human being as you're ever going to find. And I see it on the field. I don't see that. I see a man that really, really is down to business. And I, I, I knew that they were building around this guy, and they've done a good job. That's a pretty good offensive line. It's not enough to beat the Vikings just yet, but it's coming. The Motor City Kitties are the only uh, team under 500 in the NFC North, by the way, just uh, stating the facts. Uh, the Packers, I was watching uh, ESPN during my lunch today, and uh, they had a guy on there that ranked his top five, and he had the Packers as the third best team in the NFL. Oh had the Packers as the third, not in the NFC, mind you, the third best team in the NFL. I, I almost went over and grabbed the TV and threw it up against the wall because I'm like, this guy's got, anyway. That's a little over a bit of an exaggeration, but I was stunned uh, to see that. So, uh, having said that, we'll uh, we'll see how all things played out. I think the Packers got a little lucky. They had 14 points, I think, in the first quarter, if I remember yeah, right, or shortly yeah. after the first quarter, and uh, then score again. So, if you think that, uh, I wonder what our thumbs downers for Kirk Cousins had to say about Aaron Rodgers. I, hey, do you like Aaron? What about Aaron Rodgers? Is he any good? <laughs> No comment from the bar except for one gagging that, and I understand Better that one. Than cousins. That <laughs> <laughs> Better than cousins is what we. Yeah, he might be. He needs to get a haircut though. I, every time I see him, I, I go crazy. I can't. He's a conceited <laughs> asshole. <laughs> there you go. I can back that up. I hope you guys didn't hear. Yeah, we won't well, be uh, that. We'll, right, we'll, we'll be all right. right. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. So. Okay, uh, what else in the NFL did we get out of uh, last week? Well, it, it's um, I, I'll tell you what I'm going to get out of it this week. At 8.30 in the morning on Sunday, the Minnesota Vikings are going to be playing the New Orleans Saints in London, England. Well, England swing like a pendulum do, but we'll see what happens on that. And because the game is so early, my wife assured me that at the end of that game, I could go outside and do some work around the, around the, the cabin. So you know, you she volunteered me for that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. other than that, that's kind of an interesting swing, and uh, you know, and and also, you know, I, I mean, some games, uh, not only Tampa Bay and Green Bay, but um, but the Giants and 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 the Cowboys. Giants are no longer undefeated. Matter of fact, there's only two undefeated teams left Giants in the whole league, and two. and and, and uh, the Cowboys, who were just devastated, 
that they lost Dak Prescott. Uh, uh, how's my pick now sounding that they can go to the Super Bowl when they lose their starting quarterback and win back to or win that two out of the first three games? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, they played well, and and you have to keep in mind that Dallas is capable of winning some of these games because they still got a real fine defense. They got a great defense, yeah. and uh, I, I don't believe that the Giants are ready to make the leap to the top tier. So uh, the fact that uh, the Giants are two and one, and uh, Dallas is two and one, and Philadelphia's three and zero. I mean, that's they're they're one of only two divisions that have three teams above five hundred. You know which the other one is, the NFC North. They've got three teams above five hundred. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Anyway, that means nothing three three weeks into the season. But anyway, the uh, the, the game on Sunday uh, with with uh, New Orleans again. That's an eight thirty start. So uh, have to like I said adjust your schedules. Uh, the Miami game with uh, Tua. Uh, getting hurt, they say it's a back injury. It's not a concussion. Uh, I, I, saw that. I don't believe that, that for a was, second. Nobody's going to. He was he was hammered when he come up, and his head. I mean, th that was a, that was a, a neurological injury. If I ever did see one, and somebody uh, yeah. sh somebody should uh, get fired for that. They I, never... I, I cannot believe they're telling me that it's a back injury that can make you collapse like that. It, it, no, it was. It, it, it might go watch the video if you haven't. Uh, uh, but. Having said that, Miami beats Buffalo 21-90. 90 plays for Buffalo on offense, 39 for Miami, and Miami, Miami wins at 21-19. Is that something? How, that, how does that happen? I not 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 100 percent sure. So, yeah, the NFL is uh, got exactly what they want: parity. They got everybody with a chance to make the playoffs. They got everybody with a chance to be the worst. Uh, look, look at Indy, one one and one. They go and. and uh, and beat Kansas City, and well, you're and, like, there's no and, way. And, and beat them all. Um, so <laughs> I, I just, I, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, anybody can be right on any uh, uh, given week. Uh, you got quarterbacks throw. Jacksonville beats <laughs> beats the LA Chargers 38 to 10. Jacksonville, what? I, I mean, it just, I don't know. No, and Jimmy Garoppolo makes a comeback. Yeah, I, and, and still lost, right? He still lost, but you know, people were saying that that uh, next year he is going to be uh, the highest price free agent ever. Ever? Ever. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that he ever intended on playing for the 49ers this year, and uh, and I, I think yeah, I think, he, I think he'd have preferred to have been someplace else, yeah. but uh, it's his team now again, and uh, their San Francisco's probably dang happy to have him, and He's probably happy to be a starting quarterback again, I would guess. Well, and again, San Francisco is a great football team because they have a great defense. And they have, you know, a super defensive line, and that's where it starts. And, you know, Oboza, he's one of my faves. Okay. He can come hard. Want to talk about hook and laterals at all before we leave we football? We can talk about hook and laterals. That's kind of a standard play for our, for our Broncos these days. Uh, uh, nice, uh, nice seventy-yard completion. If you want to watch the hook and lateral play, go to yourliveevent.com. Go to broadcast archives, and uh, go to about uh, the middle of the second quarter, uh, which is about fifty plays in, which is about an hour into the broadcast, and uh, you can watch almost the most perfectly executed hook and lateral I think that I've ever seen. Yeah, you could you could have just diagrammed that off, and that's the way it's supposed to work right there. But do you, do you think Hinkley Finlayson's been working on that play this week? I, I, I bet you they know that it's. I bet you they know that it's going to be there. Yeah. And so, uh, and they'd be crazy if they didn't. I mean, that's it's, it's and, you know, and also. I mean, um, uh, Cooper Crandall's carrying about 75 or 80 percent of the running game. And so uh, they, yeah, they, more know, than that, 80 percent in, in the last game. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, I'd like to see, I'd like to see uh, the quarterback pick up a little bit of that. I, I actually, I didn't think that. Uh, I, I, I thought that uh, that Cody Joslin played pretty well last week. Not only on offense but defense, I thought he played very well. Yeah, through fourteen times for twenty five or fourteen for twenty five for yeah. two hundred yards on the offensive side. Yeah. Uh, was third highest I think on the team in defensive points as a defensive tackle, which is not easy to do. So uh, yeah, he had he had a nice game. Had yeah. one good hit that deserved two points, three points. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Broncos are zero and four. They were down 23, 20 to half. I think if I've got this right, they had their first lead ever this season. When they went ahead eight to seven, uh, about four minutes into the game on uh, Friday night, and then uh, Deer River was 23-20 at the half, and then the opening kickoff was muffed by the Broncos, and the Broncos never got them 
the, the momentum back. Never. You know, we talk about all, time, all the time at the beginning, the key is. And I don't know why it is this year. Turnovers is a key. And, you know, oh, yeah. You know, and some well, and here's the thing. The that. Broncos had just that one turnover in the whole game. Yeah. Deer River had three, and they win the yeah. game. Frustrating. It was. Frustrating. So. Uh, anyway. And, but we got, uh, we've got we got Hinkley coming up. Hinkley Finlayson, yep. The Jaguars. The Jaguars. Or Jaguars or Jaguars. I, or, haven't, I haven't scouted them yet, but uh, I remember them from last year. Yeah, a team I thought last year the Broncos could have played with. Yeah. Just uh, didn't. Had a couple opportunities inside the 10 yard line and didn't convert. And uh, that game could have been, been vastly different. Oh, I think we'll see so. how, how the Jaguars handle the long road trip to International Falls. You know, it's just as long going both directions, so uh, it doesn't bother me. No, yeah. no, absolutely. It's just that that's something that we're a little bit more yeah. used to, those long trips. To, to say that they would be, would be I, I think, would be, uh, would be a falsehood. Well, they'll so. probably come up the night before that's happened. Yeah. Let's talk baseball a little Let's bit. Let's talk a little baseball. These, <clears throat> they won last night. Twins uh, get a 4 nothing win. Bailey Ober pitched out of his brain uh, coming off the injury. So uh, good to see the big man uh, do well. Uh, uh, Miranda had three hits, I think I saw. Walner hit a moonshot of a home run. So no, they had, and he's, he's a home-style boy. You know, yeah. I, I, whoever heard that he was going to. He come from double-A at the beginning of the year. There was a tweet just before I got here that I saw the... Uh, <laughs> St. Paul Saints, the AAA affiliate for the Twins, had 40 different pitchers in uniform and 49 different position players. Wow. 49 position almost, players. Almost 100 people. And just think, that's the club that's just below the major league level. That's inc- that's, that's, that's stunning. I mean, I know you get that rehab assignment guy from the majors, they go down and they rehab, but to think... Forty-nine position. Players. I'd like to get. I'd like to get those stats from some other, uh, from some other minor league clubs because uh, that's a lot. That's a ton. Yeah, and forty pitchers even. Well, you know, think about that. And we probably use. And the fact that they just they're just across town, it makes it awfully convenient because. And maybe that's why it was as high as it was because it was. they were so close. Yeah. Anyway, and, and I think that you know you got to take a few things away from this from this uh, season. And number one is. And they started off with a pretty good starting pitching staff, and then everybody got hurt. I mean, I don't think Archer's going to be back. I don't know about Mally or any of the rest of those guys, you know. And, and they just and they have good uh, resumes, but they really never had a chance to get going. And Archer, he's was never really rehabilitated from the year before. That It'd be interesting said, to see what what happens with Archer, whether he's with the Twins or not. Uh, I just interested to see if he'll be able to stretch it out a little bit. And I think I talked with somebody the other day about this that Rocco Baldelli has to learn that the way you manage your pitchers in April and May is not the way that you would manage your pitchers in July and August. I've heard that before too. Um, I think he I think he needs to understand that. So you're starting pitching, can pitch into the seventh inning. They can throw over 100 pitches. It's okay to do that. Um, so hopefully he learns as well. Uh, Thad Levine basically came out the other day and said, Rocco Baldelli is not going anywhere this season or next season or for the foreseeable future. We are committed to him. So if you don't like Rocco Baldelli, you're going to have to learn to suck it up because he's not he's not leaving. And uh, I, 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 part of me is okay with that. And part of me says... Uh, he needs well. He needs a healthy team, and I don't want. I, I don't like to give that excuse, but there are just there are just too many factors for that team to overcome, and uh, it is what it is. They right now they are not completely eliminated from postseason play. No. They, they still could get into the wild card theoretically. Is it going to happen? Probably not. But they still could get in. They would have to run the table and. Seattle would have to unrun the table, as they somehow say in the show or someplace. Well, you know, and the other thing is they give it quite a run there for oh, better almost three quarters of a season. They were yeah, they made it they, fun. They made it fun, and uh, they have some nice young kids. Uh, I enjoyed watching them play. I, I I do think that they can rehab that pitching staff. But when you're talking about having 15, 16 people in your in your bullpen and you're going through them. Uh, you know, it's just they can't go every day, and so That's why the starters got to, yeah. And and you got starters that, you know, you cheer them if they go past five. Uh, true, true. So 
you know, last, week, last week we sat here and would have probably guaranteed you that by the next time we spoke to you that Aaron Judge would have uh, hit his 61st home run. But yet here we sit with him still at 60. With oh, a week, I thought he was going to get a ton this weekend. With a, with a week to go, is it possible we could be sitting here next Wednesday on the final day of the regular season saying he still needs 61? Is there any chance no. of that? No. There's, no. No, I agree. There's no chance. Uh, he's going to whack one. There's no chance. He makes it look so easy, too. Yeah, he's uh, leading the, still leading the league in at batting average by a point or two over Luis Arias. Um, and he's leading, obviously, in home runs and RBIs. So still got a chance to win the Triple Crown. And uh, last night he went 0 for 1 with four walks. Do you think um, Do you think that they'll win the American League pennant? The Yankees? Yeah. No. They're playing too inconsistently right now. Yeah, so they, I, I, they, they clinched the AL East last night. Yeah. But... Uh, no, it, it, right now I'm saying it goes through Houston. Uh, Houston clinched the AL West last week sometime, and they're still going out and beating teams uh, even with nothing, quote-unquote, to play for other than the home field advantage in the ALCS. I mean, uh, the Dodgers have got the World Series part of that wrapped up. But, uh, no, uh, everybody, I mean, three months ago we were saying the Yankees had won 60 games through the end of June. Wow, who was going to even touch them? Uh, they're not the team that they were. Uh, in the early part of the season, and of course, every team changes, and so that uh, no, I say it goes through Houston. Well, Much as that pains me to say it, but that's the truth. They're really, they're really singing the ballad of of Mookie Betts uh, in Boston these days. The curse of Mookie Betts. And somebody says, you know, I went. You out, poor buggers in Boston. I went, I went out and watched him play, and Mookie Betts is on the bench, and he's got a day off, but he brings him in the ninth inning as a pinch hitter. And he gets a walk off hit, and it's just at the end of the time, end of the game, they're walking out. There are literally hundreds of kids waiting to meet um, Mookie, and he's walking down and signing off. He's there for almost an hour, going through all these kids and signing and talking and all the rest of this stuff. He has become a cult hero in Los Angeles and Boston. I mean, he is a hometown boy. Got nothing for him. That's uh, yep. That's like the frag. Well, welcome to free agency, baby. Yeah, where the, to where the big agency. bucks keep. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Boston has big bucks. They did. They 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 definitely aired. Uh, St. Louis uh, Cardinals clinched uh, last night again. Those dirty pot lickers, Jay Barkowski, and uh, the Mets and the uh, Braves are tied for the NL. Oh, um, I never thought that that would happen. I thought they, that, I they, thought the Mets they would keep happen hanging in there. Um, did you hear about the Miami pitcher from last night? Were you listening to my sports this morning? No. One pitcher, one batter, three box. Three box. Three box to the same batter. So, having said all that, I'm watching this on SportsCenter last night. Scott Van Pelt, I love Scott Van Pelt. I, I, I'm a big fan. He's so good. He says he watched the, the film, the, the the tape of all three of the box, and he goes, "I can't see what he's going, what he's doing wrong." So here's all the pitcher was doing it, real slow, slower, slower, still moving, and then throw. Well, it's a bomb because you've got to come to the set. And hold for a second. Well, he was never stopping. And he couldn't figure out why. Scott Van Pelt couldn't figure out why. And I'm like, you know, Scott Van Pelt is sitting in a building with whatever, how many people around that are pretty smart in baseball. And for Scott Van Pelt to say he couldn't figure out what was going on, uh, I don't know. You don't have to be an umpire. There was no pause. There was no pause. Never. Not, 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 a, not close to a pause. Not even close. And so he got called three times. So the runner that was on first base scored. The Mets still lost. But I've never seen three box in a game, not much less three box to the same batter from the same pitcher. Uh, I'll probably go to my grave without uh, seeing that ever again. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, baseball. You just never know what you're going to get. Wild cards are still open um, in both leagues. It's, it's going to be uh, kind of crazy in the fact that who might get the top with Toronto or Tampa Bay. Seattle's in there, but they're floundering right now. I, yeah, they, 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 they can't seem to find their way. The Milwaukee Brewers are still in the uh, wild card chase. They're kind of sitting out uh, out there a little bit. But uh, if they can make a run here, they could find themselves in the playoffs because uh, uh, Atlanta's already in, obviously. Uh, I think they're just a day away from clinching or whatever. So uh, either the NL East, getting in by NL East or by the wild card. So by next Wednesday, that is the last day of the regular season. The playoffs start not this Friday, but next Friday.
Whew. It's actually this is this is the best part of baseball right here. And I'm, no, you know, and, 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 and I'm just saying, the St. Louis Cardinals and Los Angeles Dodgers is going to be a good show. And there's your prediction. And right? Albert Pujol, he is a man of destiny these days. And yeah, that 700 was was uh, 699. 700 is pretty good. Uh, it's not too bad at all. And it's just so I'll say this for. For my guru down there in Minneapolis, go Cardinals. Go oh, Cardinals. Team. All right, I tried to get George to change over yeah, to wild. the Wild. Let's go let's try a little hockey. Yeah, Wild. Uh, they went, played last night. They won two preseason games, both over the defending Stanley Cup champs. Here we go. Here right we go. up the tickets. Let's start bringing the Stanley Cups coming to St. Paul, baby. Well, they, 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 they're, they're ranked number two behind, oh, the Avalanche. Imagine that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, uh, a lot of kids, guys getting to play that aren't going to be with the big club. Um, so don't, I'm, I'm just being a little whatever about that. But it'll be interesting to see how good the Wild are. Carell took a shot to the foot uh, in Sunday's game, uh, game one. And uh, they made him leave the game. He was very upset. With the coaching staff that they that they took him out of the game, which I find hilarious. But uh, I like that he's competitive. But it's 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 preseason, Kirill. Hang on. Hey, I like that he's here. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely that. So anyway, Wild play uh, Dallas on Thursday night. Continue through. First game is two weeks from Thursday. Uh, on October 13th as they take on the New York Rangers and uh, I'm excited to see how it all pans out. You know what, I'm getting a, a lot of good vibrations out of uh, out of this Timberwolves camp as well. Timberwolves started camp here yeah. and uh, well they got to be positive at the start of camp. This is the best team they've ever put on the court. Ooh. This is Did the you hear team. that? Yeah, it's the best team they've ever Boy, I'll bet Kevin Garnett and Latrell Spreewell and uh, what's his name? Yeah, that uh, was... Who was the point that guard? That was good, and they and they and they actually come on. How can I? How can I not remember who the point guard was? Yeah, um, they might disagree with you, but keep going. No, I, I, what I'm saying is, is that uh, I think these guys can win some playoff games, and and Kevin Garnett, don't get me wrong, fantastic basketball player. You can't do it with one or two guys. You have to have at least three. And it's just, do you think we got three now? I do think we have we Anthony F. Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, and Rudy Gobert? Is that our three? I, that's the three that I would some, pick. Some, some people might say that Rudy Gobert can't be part of that three, that you need three guys that are one that's not the... Yeah. Rudy's going to adapt. He's, he's, he's a professional, to. and he's he's very, very good basketball player. It'll be very interesting because this will allow Cat to play on the outside and not have to worry about going down and being that... Post player, not that he won't be down there, folks. Don't get me wrong. Rudy Gobert is not going to play 40 minutes a game. He's probably in that 32 to 36 minute range. So uh, they're going to need some presence on the inside. And maybe that's where Carl Anthony can go in to the post every once in a while when Rudy's uh, taking his breather. And we'll see how D'Angelo Russell comes back. Obviously, Anthony Edwards has had his little mouth issue. Well, hopefully that he grows and learns from that. He's just 21, right? So yeah, you know, um, kids, hopefully we, kids are, we remember when we were 21, right? Oh, how stupid we were. So God. hopefully, uh, I mean, we yeah, can all say you should know better, but sometimes you, uh, yeah, 21, you I get mean, caught up in the moment. No. I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him a break. All right. Not that that's everybody I, wants me to give him a break, but I'm going to say that we've all done dumb things when we were 21 that we would love to take back. No, I do know that I thought that the big cat was most effective when he was out at that power shooting position, and uh, he's he's quick. He's got good elevation, hard to stop. That's a nice jump shot for him. Just shut your mouth, Carl. He shut got, up. Yeah, he's got a. Got you don't a have to talk to the referees. No, they already know what you are. Shut up. Yeah. Okay. That's just my hint to Carl Anthony Towns to help them to, to get to... They've got a good coach. I think they've got a fairly good coaching staff, and they've got a whole audience just waiting for them to come out. This is... Uh, they're going to be hot this winter. And I tell you, you've, you've got a hot hockey team. You've got um, all kinds of... Go for basketball might be coming on pretty strong. Uh, there's all kinds of good sports going on in Minneapolis right now, but the Wild and go, the Timberwolves go for, are doing Go it. for men's hockey. It's supposed to be big go for men's hockey. back in the NCAA yeah, Final yes. Four. Everybody's talking about it. Of course, yeah. men's hockey gets started this weekend as long as we're in the hockey mode. UMD gets to play Arizona State in a weekend series at Amsoil, so I'm jacked to go down and watch a little hockey on Saturday night. Well, Arizona State's being the power. The power of hockey, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, bring them in. You, you just never know. You, you really don't, and 
and hockey is all over the place these days. I mean, it's yeah. only going to keep growing. Yeah, it's only going to keep growing. Some of the peers don't like it. That's all right. That's all right. Nothing Some of the peers it. don't like it. Well, they can't be in the South. Oh, look at Tampa Bay, the Lightning. Look at they've uh, they've won uh, how many Stanley Cups? They, they're in Bowling Florida. Green. I mean, all the rest of these, you know, college teams that are down south playing this game, it's good for them. So if, uh, if, if Kansas City and Tampa Bay get moved to uh, U.S. Bank Stadium, are you driving down on Sunday to watch them? No, but I think that's a good idea. No, I don't. You know how hard I bet it would be to get a ticket for that game? I know it's 60000 for two teams that aren't our team, but the Vikings play at 8.30. The game would on be Saturday. over oh, on Sunday. Oh, on Sunday. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll pack them in. The, the place will be full. Oh, It'll I be, know. They'll pack it in, and they'll probably get regular prices like, like they do probably for the Vikes. I mean, maybe not the $1,000 seats, but you know Kansas City will travel you, like gangbusters if that game gets moved. you got two premier quarterbacks like that. People will... I, you know, I'd go pay to see him. Look, okay, see, he's already he's already making me change my plans for Sunday because he wants to go uh, watch that football game. That would be I'm, I would enjoy that. I'm uh, saving my dough for California in, in January. Yeah, let's uh, yeah let, let's let's think about that. Okay, so we got uh, basketball. We, we got did we get everything out of the way? How about the how about the women's uh, USA women's basketball team at the World Cup? You, did, did you see a few of their scores this? No, the, I, you know, the one one hundred and forty-five to sixty-nine. Yeah, they just hammered somebody. Bosnia Herzegovina, I believe, is who it was. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's just another that's, powerhouse. That's a Wisconsin or a women's basketball powerhouse. Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, they start the quarterfinals tonight against Serbia, and uh, I don't think anybody will get too close to them. Give them much of a challenge for the the championship, despite the fact that we're short-handed. Blah, blah, blah. Cheryl Miller's got him going in the right direction. They, it's, just yeah. a, it's just a foregone conclusion. Well, I, I do remember Cheryl Miller as a, as a player, and I'm sure she's every, every bit the coach. Uh, Cheryl Reeve, not Cheryl. Oh, I Cheryl said Reeve. that wrong. That was my bad. Cheryl okay. Reeve. Well, in the old brain. Cheryl Reeve. From, yeah. from the Lynx, she's the, she's she's the, the head best. coach. Yeah. Um, did you watch any of the President's Cup over the weekend? Uh, no, but I, uh, I, I can't figure out how they do the scores. Fifteen and a half points. I mean, what's this? So when you tie, if you everybody, if you're tied at the end of the yeah. eighteen holes, you don't go play an extra hole. You just split the point from your match. So that's that's all that. Uh, they kind of walked away with it, though. They were so way far. ahead, but yeah. then they got beat over the oh, weekend. Oh, they did, huh? Over the weekend, what of did the, you get beat by? Well, the the U they got the team wise, they got beat ten and a half to nine and a half over the weekend oh. by the international team that was oh. not supposed to be able to stand in there. So. Anyway, it was fun to watch. I enjoyed it. Uh, I had it on while the Vikings were on, you know, t- the two TV situation. Had the volume off on the Vikings game and was listening to the golf because it's kind of hard to watch the golf unless you can hear what, who's going on, who's up, who's down. Uh, see, I don't have the high-tech stuff. I'm living in the wilderness these days. Yeah. so I, he's, only, I, he's only got one. Yeah, anyway. So, uh, the, President's, the President's Cup was fun. What else have we got going on? Anything? Uh... Yeah, I can't. The, I, that's about where I, I'm at. I can't think of anything. I, I, I do know that the, I hear that the, that the, the Gopher. Um, oh, been watching a little Gopher volleyball. Oh yeah, and they were. Uh, that was fun against Wisconsin, Wisconsin on Sunday night. Yeah. It made me lose some sleep. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was fun. To, it's fun to see. Yeah, they uh, after they lost to Purdue on the road. Gophers ranked number eight in the nation against number eleven on the road at Purdue. They lose in three sets, and I'm like. Oh darn it! This is this isn't good. Well, then they come home and take on the defending national champion, number six ranked Wisconsin. And I can't say they made it look easy, but they looked comfortable on their home floor. Well, they did, and, and that, did you notice that home court was packed? Tough to get a ticket right now for Gopher volleyball. It really is. They got a good team, and they're gonna they're gonna do just fine. And their recruiting is, you know, they're still looking at at, at uh, blue chip players. And as is uh, Lindy Whalen, she's she's picking up some kids. Right and left. Uh, we do feel bad about a couple of the Gopher men that that aren't going to be there. And it wasn't so much that you, because you, you can't get them all. But Wisconsin, oh, you hate to see that. You, Nolan Winter, you're on the you're on the bad list. Well, so is uh, so is Davison. He's still on the bad list. Oh, he, he, he's a Maple Grove kid. He's a Falls kid that went to Wisconsin. You're on the bad list. I don't. I know that's going to make a lot of people in International Falls mad, but he's on that list of Minnesotans that left for Wisconsin. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you something. When his grandfather is inducted in the Hall of Fame, you can bring that up to him. I'm sure he'll be here. 
Do you think I should do that? No. <laughs> No, you don't. I would love to talk to him about it. Oh, I, I, I would. About, about going and play for those hated badger cheesehead buggers. Anyway. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, it'll be nice to see his dad and uh, and, and see all of Davidson's. That's a good bunch. I'm sure we're forgetting something uh, here as we uh, follow along, but uh, you know, another 45 minute show, George. Just about that. That probably. Did we should... get that again? We did it again. It's hard to believe that we can talk for 45 minutes. And we, we didn't even really talk about what is coming up this week with either of the football schedules. I mean, we talked about the Vikings, but we didn't really even talk about any college, major college matchups or anything else. So, yeah, it, it's good enough for today, right? Yeah, we can. we, we, we got to keep them hungry right. for more out there, George, so that right. they keep coming back. Yeah, hungry for more. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.